Hey guys, it's Carl. A bit of a fun video today. We're actually partnering with Qualcomm to test out the new Samsung Galaxy Book Go 5G. Put it through its paces on a typical day for me in the fall, September, October. It's the busiest time of the year, Q4. For techies, I know tech is coming into the studio, into home, pretty much every single day now. And we'll kind of go through a very typical day for me starting off at home, which I usually wake up around 7.30, 8 a.m., kick things off with a shower and then breakfast, which this morning consists of my mom's banana bread and a Red Bull because I ran out of coffee. And the first thing that I tackle is emails. And contrary to most content creators, I actually love to email. It's one of my favorite parts of the day and kind of testing out this new laptop. So it does feature the Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 2 5G chip. And most people know Qualcomm for their mobile chipsets. For example, my daily Android device, the Galaxy Z Fold 3. This has the Snapdragon 888, but they also produce chipsets for laptops. So the Galaxy Book Go comes in a bunch of different options. The one I'm using with the Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 2 5G chip. Depending on where you live, there's also a 4G LTE variant. And if you're in the US or Canada, there's a Wi-Fi only version with a Snapdragon 7C Gen 2 chip. That comes in at $349, which I think is an awesome deal. But if you are someone that wants a 5G enabled laptop. So for someone that needs to use this device all the time when you're on the go, I know that work back to school is kind of picking up in person again. It's perfect if you need a thin and light laptop with a fanless design and has more premium performance. And it's more of a productivity laptop. So for starting off my day doing things like emailing is the perfect kind of mix. I typically spend an hour every morning catching up to emails that have come in from either Europe or Asia. Then I kind of quickly check the stocks once they open up. And using the laptop so far with the chiclet style keyboard, it's been great. It is made out of plastic that helps serve two purposes. It keeps the device nice and light and of course cuts down on some of the costs. So after my first rounds of emails are kind of done for the morning, I switch to a bit of a personal project. And for those of you that don't know, I'm building and designing a house that both me and my girlfriend are moving into in a couple years. So I kind of browse through some inspiration for the day. So I either use a little architect book that I've got, and then I kind of go to this app called SketchUp, and it's the greatest app that I've used for kind of modeling and designing. And I'm coming from no background or a zero background of 3D modeling or 3D designing. And it's completely free to use. And I do know that architects have a pro version that you can buy, but for someone like me, who's kind of just designing some mock-up ideas, I find it pretty handy. So you can actually see here a very quick glimpse of what the future house is gonna look like. And yes, this area up top here is what the future studio will look like. And this is where I found the Book Go 5G to be super handy because yes, I can design things here at home. I'm connected to Wi-Fi, but I also bring this a lot to on-site meetings with either my architect or builder. We can bounce ideas off of each other. If I've seen something new and want to make modifications to the model, I can kind of do so in real time because I'm always connected with 5G. So that's pretty awesome. But I know that's kind of just a little sneak peek. I'll kind of share the entire process. I think a lot of you guys are interested. I still think the timeline is around two to two and a half years. So there is a ton of time and a lot more planning to do. And kind of after that morning, I'm kind of ready to head to the studio now. So maybe let's um, kind of get going. Laptop into the backpack, nice and easy. P.S. Uh, if you guys didn't know, this also just happened the other day. <sighs> so unfortunate. And here we are in the studio. And I guess the best part of being downtown Toronto, everything is around 10 minutes away. So this is a nice short little commute and this can go on the reviewer table. The best part about being in the studio now is testing this to its full extent. The first thing that I actually had to do was hop on a Teams call. I unfortunately can't share the info because it's under NDA. The project code name is Project Cheetah. So if any of you can guess, 
big brownie points to you. The first thing that I did notice though was how good the video quality was. So we've got a high def front facing camera for all your Zoom or team meetings, whichever one you use. The display, like I mentioned, it is 14 inches. So it's a decent size, but because it's LCD based, because we're kind of keeping things on budget, the viewing angles, when you kind of go off axis, you see it does lose a lot of that clarity, but that's kind of expected. And maybe the best part, you can always hook it up to an external monitor. Or if you want to go super extreme, this can support a dual 4K monitor setup. And that's always the best part about being in the studio. We can test these laptops out with all of the goodies. And this is the beauty of monitors and laptops these days. It's a one cable, simple plug and play via USB-C. I did mention this is of course overkill. This is a cinema grade or a studio grade level of monitor. Studios like Pixar, Sony are using these exact monitors to grade all of their footage. And I get that most people don't use their devices for that. You just need a solid, reliable laptop. Doesn't break the bank. You always want to be connected. Great for students, great for business professionals. Great as even say a second laptop. I did manage to download Lightroom. So all of the photos I took over the past couple days, I've actually edited with this device, ran seamlessly. And if you ever have the need to attach it to external monitor, say you come back from class, say you come back from work at the end of the day, you still wanna get some work done on a bigger display, you've got that option. So yeah, the next kind of big chunk of my day revolves around either being behind the computer, so I'm either editing, answering more emails, or taking more calls, or being behind the camera, whether I'm shooting A roll like this, maybe I'm doing B roll of the products that I'm testing. I do that for around three to four hours, and then I definitely need a bit of a break, and I'm actually pretty lucky as I've got my home gym here in the studio, three or four steps that way, and, um, yeah, maybe you can join me for a workout and that's usually when I do watch some sort of content on whatever device. And typically my workouts focus on one muscle group. I do four sets of 10 reps. So today I'm focusing on shoulders and this is usually the time where I can zone out. This is my one hour in the day where I can catch up on any shows, any sort of TV, any soccer that I'm watching. So I usually have a screen off to the side and I'm currently kind of crushing Squid Game on Netflix. It is maybe the best show that I've seen since Game of Thrones. So if any of you haven't seen it, uh, I won't put out any spoilers, but an absolute must watch. It is so good and just make sure you watch it in Korean with English subtitles. I don't think you can do the reverse. But yeah, so good. Let's crush a workout. Okay, so uh, just uh, finished off around 45 minutes of a workout. A couple things that I noticed of the laptop, the sound output is actually pretty good. So it does have Snapdragon sound, Dolby Atmos built in, and because the articulation of the laptop is so great, you can kind of swivel it all the way to 180 degrees, kind of any viewing angle, you should be able to watch your content. So great for media consumption. And something that I forgot, when I do go to some of those architecture meetings, usually we kind of sit across from a table from each other, and it has this little handy mode when you articulate the laptop all the way down, you can press a button on the keyboard, which will actually flip the orientation in which way the screen is facing. So it's actually great for sharing content. And overall, who I guess is this laptop for? So if we look at this one specifically, the 5G model with a higher performance Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 2 chip, it goes beyond being always connected and staying on top of your emails. You can always download, upload, stream content, and it comes in a package that's an awesome price for a 5G device, and even in areas where 5G isn't fully available yet. For example, I'm up here in Canada, it still connects to previous cell standards with great speeds. The model down, which is the Wi-Fi only version with the Snapdragon 7C Gen 2, 350 bucks. That is super attractive to students for a budget device that just works really well. That's kind of the same price point as Chromebooks. And this of course has the full OS of Windows 10, soon to be Windows 11. And it's not exactly a slouch either. Even in the middle of my workout, when I kind of brought the laptop to watch content, I did pump out an email or two. I noticed that it wasn't even hot on the bottom. So it's a fanless design. It doesn't overheat. So the thermals are great. 
screen. I'm not saying it's completely perfect. There are some compromises. You don't have a fingerprint reader. It's just the simple on and off button. It's completely made out of plastic. There is quite a bit of give on the keyboard. There's no backlit keys. But if you're willing to look past those things, I think it's a solid device. And as of right now, it's right around 6.30 p.m. So I've been on the device for most of the day. We are sitting at 69% battery life. That wasn't planned. That's the last thing that I want to talk about. The battery efficiency on this is just so good. I think this is a device that you could use for almost two days before juicing it up. And that's due to the efficiency of the Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 2 chip, really similar to say their smartphones, for example. When they're not in use, they only sip on power. And before we end, there's still a couple things I have to do before the end of the day for me. I've got a soccer game. I'm gonna go out with some friends tonight and I'll report back when I get back home. I still do one last round of emails before bed and I'll let you know what the battery's like and give you my final thoughts. So thankfully I didn't record anything of that game. I missed an absolute sitter. We're back home. There's always another game. We've got deliveries. There should also be someone here uh, excited to see us. I've got literally the bag lady right now. Oh, hi, 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 hi. Hi, hi, oh, look who's home, hi, hi. Oh, hey, can you sit? This is the problem. Oh, you sit, good boy. Oh, 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 hi. This is literally the greatest thing about having a dog, Link, is, oh, are you excited to see that? I missed you today, buddy. I missed you. So Link was with my girlfriend all day, um, and I'm about to go meet her, so I should probably shower. Maybe I'll give Link a little walk. <sighs> Maybe adjust the white balance for a sec. Okay, I think that looks a tad bit better. As you guys can see, 931 and battery life check. I mean, technically, I haven't even used it since I came home from the studio. So still at 69%. I was gonna smash out a couple more emails, but uh, I think that's the end of my work day. I'm just gonna head out, get a couple drinks, and um, yeah, you pretty much kind of know what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this fit. Are you smelling my smelly shoes there, buddy? Don't smell those, I need to put those outside. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this vid. This was the Samsung Galaxy Book Go 5G. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.